Uh, now what we have here is we have two hard drives that were sent in to me for recovery. Now both of these hard drives were together in an array, but they both were damaged. One hard drive had extremely bad damage in sectors. The other hard drive had physical damage to the drive itself and I actually had to repair the drive. And I will go and repair the RAID array that goes with it. So once this is done, I will recover as many sectors as I can. There will still be some damage. You can see where the U's are. I'll come back, I'll make a couple more passes at those and I will try to read those um, with different settings to see if I can control the content, make sure that it appears. Okay, now I have finished repairing all of those sectors. I've repaired almost all of them. I got it down to like uh, 25,000 or something that would not repair. And uh, 25,000 with 512 bytes each, that's a, still a fairly small number, 12 megs or so. We now have repaired the sector from the damaged hard drive and we have brought them over here and I'm going to connect them to my machine for recovery. And I'm gonna do the logical side. So I've already done the physical side. Now I'm going to move to the logical side. Now the disc that's on the bottom is plugged in through a USB connector on the machine itself. And so you can actually see that it's looped back and plugged into the machine. And when you look at system management, you will now see over here that that disc is now plugged in and it's showing dynamic. Now just to kind of give you an example, the, uh, the other two discs on the top are destination, boot disc and destination. The disc that says dynamic, that one tells me something. Like I know right off the bat, I have a dynamic disc, but I've only got one disc in the system. So I really don't want to mess with this disc. I, you do have some options like import foreign disc, but in forensics, that would be really bad because when you import a disc, it makes changes to the disc. Um, you can make changes to your system and there's really not much I want to do there. I don't want to play with the disc themselves. So. I want to go and I want to start a piece of software that's going to let me view it this from a data recovery perspective. So I'm going to go and run RStudio. Now when RStudio starts, you can actually see that there is now a volume set. It knows that there's an LDM set of components. Now that's part of the logical disk management utilities that are in Windows. It writes a database to the end of the disk of each physical disk that basically says I belong to this volume and here's my content and I'm stored in reverse in many ways. So what you can see here is that I have a volume, I have a stripe, I have a uh, content that actually says it's NTFS and I've only got one disk hooked up but this tells me that I need another one. There's something else going on. So I can try to go and open the files. It'll try to show me what it can from this content and you'll see I've got a very limited list here. So I can actually go and look at some of the content that's here and see the stuff that exists in these files. But you'll see I'm missing a lot. There's a lot here that I really don't get from a 300 gig disk. So I'm gonna close this stripe. I'm gonna go back to here. Now this to me is like, okay, this is wrong. I don't have everything, but I need this other disk. So I plug in my other disk and I've got a piece of software that can control it. So right now you'll see I only have one dynamic disk still in my system. So I'm going to go to my P3C3000 software and you'll see basically all this is going to do is mount the disk. Um, the thing is I'm going to control and make sure that it's going to be mounted read only. So I'm going to tell it, okay, fine, here I am, read only, let's mount it. So now it mounts that disk in the system. Now when I go back to computer management, you'll now see there are now two dynamic disks in my system. These two dynamic disks are what I'm going to combine. So when I go back to RStudios, you'll see it still says the same information. It still knows that they're there. I'm going to refresh this view. So now it'll actually will show that there's additional disks and shows that it's there. And when I right click on this, I can say open drive files. And now it's gonna build me a more extensive list. And if you look now, I have an extensive tree of content going down in this RAID array. So I can go and look at content that's in this RAID array and go and actually see content related to uh, a number of different items and be able to go and pull up pictures, see content, look at the content inside of a disk. If I did not have this set up correct, this picture itself is 586K. It since my stripe size, 
you go and you look in device view, in the drive view, and you go and you look at my stripe, you can actually see in the RAID structure that I have two disks. They are both 149 gigs each, and they have no offset. And here I have a 64K stripe. This was actually derived from the database for a dynamic disk. If this was not a dynamic disk and this wasn't here, I would actually have to determine it myself. And you can see I went through a default block order, and I can see that content. So if there's 64K, and I went over here and I looked at a picture that was 586K, if it was not complete, it would not be one picture, it would be a stripe. So I would get a piece of information, and then I would get an additional piece of information, and I would not get one solid picture as I have here. Now the data recovery is finished. As you can see, I have actually been able to successfully build this list look at pictures, I would now just export all the content to another disk and be done with this recovery. Using this same method, I have had to rebuild an array before that had six drives in the array. And while it is difficult, it is possible to do. I teach a physical data recovery course on how to actually rebuild these drives when they're damaged like this. And if you're interested, you can go to myharddrivedied.com and you can see more information about this in the classes I teach.